Hey guys, it's Bill from Linden, Tennessee. Here's an update on the Volkswagen conversion, EV conversion project. It's been a little while, but not a whole lot significant has happened, but some kind of significant things have happened. The uh, This motor we introduced uh, last time, I do believe, this is the HP EVS AC76. I will see some vital stats here. Peak horsepower 90, continuous horsepower 15, 144 volts. So this motor, I, I dragged this motor out and wiped the dust off of it. And uh, this is an induction motor. And what that means is there's no magnets or brushes or anything in there. If you want a, to a good description on how these things work, uh, just do the YouTubes. Uh, there's there's a lot of very uh, people who are much better with words than I am. Eloquent? Not eloquent. Um, what's the word where you... What's the... What's the word when you when you're really good with words? Anyway, I'm not. So uh, there's a good description on how that works. Uh, yeah. So, but it's very satisfying to take a induction motor uh, rotor and spin it, and because it's it's fairly friction free. It um, you know it's pretty good. But what I was finding is when I did that, this would go and settle right there, and I'd bring it up to here, and it'd go and settle down to the bottom. And I marked that spot right there. It had a very, very heavy spot. Now, I kind of knew this, although I didn't really know it. Uh, when this motor was in my Ranger, the Ranger always kind of vibrated, especially at higher RPMs. It just would always vibrate. And I just assumed it was the flywheel that was out of balance or the pressure plate and all that stuff. But then I took the flywheel and pressure plate and all that stuff off, and it still did it. I never... You know, I never really paid much mind to it because I thought, you know, maybe something else was out of balance. But it turns out that this this rotor was just really, really out of balance. So I took it to a motor rebuilding place in uh, Tennessee and Nashville, and they balanced it for me. So that was about two and a half weeks ago. And then last week I was in Ohio installing uh, a machine that I build at work and uh, got it back and got it all back installed. And now I just got to I got to slap some RTV in there and you know, reconnect all these things. Anyway, so that, that needs to happen. Uh, and then I also made a little coupler. So this is a one eighth inch shaft and I got a piece of uh, two eighth inch round stock and drilled a one eight, one and eighth inch hole in it. I still need to broach a keyway. That'll go on there. And then there's a one and a half inch register that will go on this part. This part came out of the middle of the friction disc of the clutch. And that goes right there like that. And then I'll just weld that together approach it first and then weld that together and then that'll be my coupler and it, so that'll go uh in here right there and it'll just spline on my uh input shaft a little bit like that and that's how that'll be so this part this is a piece of eighth inch steel plate it was a big piece of thing weighed like 60 pounds and that's gonna be my uh Gonna be my motor plate, so that's gonna adapt the motor to the transmission. I took and uh, bored out a four-inch hole that'll uh, register on the motor, and then these holes, four of these eight holes, I went ahead and did all eight of them, but four of these eight holes will go, will bolt the motor to this plate. This is just a C-face adapter; it's very common. So that was my big plate, but it was like 60 pounds, and it was really unwieldy and, and way too big. So what I did was, uh, there's there's a little there's a little shaft in here. Dang it, can't get it out. Hold on. There we go. So there's a little shaft. This normally you push on the clutch and it pushes this forward and that engages the um, that engages the uh, clutch mechanism. And it's a it's a five sixteenths or eight millimeter. It's the same thing really. So I got me a piece of paper, a piece of cardboard, and drilled a five inch inch hole in the middle of it and set it on top of the transmission without this plate here and then drew a line underneath of it um, where the where the transmission is and then cut that out and put this uh, put and then got a rough a rough cut just with a, a torch a rough cut of where that is set that on there and then the way I located that centered is I got a piece of four inch round stock drilled a 5 16 hole through it and then that goes right here. It does. That goes right there. And then that same push rod locates this hole so that this four inch plate or four inch round stock is, is centered on the input shaft. Then I could put this plate on top of that and dig this part out so that it would fit over this 
uh, CV flange, which we're going to talk a little bit about here in a minute. And then once that's done, you come down here with some white spray paint and you just spray paint the bottom of the, the um, this little motor plate. Then I can pull that off and have a very accurate outline of where the transmission actually is. <sighs> now let's talk about this. I don't have my tape measure with me, but if you notice this distance from here to here is about three inches. Well, let's go up to our motor. This is where that, this is the four inch register that sits inside that. The distance from here to here is something more than three inches, like a lot more. So this motor won't actually fit on there. And that's a big, big friggin' problem. Uh, there's a few solutions. I've got this little DC motor, this little brushed series one brush DC motor. See, it's got some brushes in there and a commutator. No, you can't see in there. Anyway, it's got a commutator in there. So this is a brushed series one DC motor. Uh, I need to buy an, a controller for it, a DC controller. And that would fit. This motor will fit on my transmission plate and it won't hit that CV flange. It's actually, this motor is actually a little bit shorter than the induction motor. So it'll definitely fit in the engine bay itself. Problem is, with brushed DC motors, you've got maintenance. You gotta do some maintenance. These brushes, they don't last forever. They do wear out over time, maybe 30,000 miles. I don't actually know, but, and then there's some interim maintenance that you gotta do. You pull this, pull this plate off and then you blow out the carbon because there'll be carbon buildup in here. And what can happen is that carbon can uh, cause a ground. It can ground out your, uh, it can ground out everything and it can cause your battery to go dead on you or it can cause a, um, a high voltage uh, leak to ground, which can be kind of dangerous. So anyway, they're just, they're not good for a, for a car that you're going to put like lots of miles on and stuff. And there's no region, there's no reverse. Not exactly true. The motor controller that I was looking at does actually have reverse and it internally reverses it and it does have region, but these brushes are kind of angled. Um, such that they hit the commutator bars at a more effective uh, angle to basically go in one direction. And if you run it backwards, there tends to be a lot of arcing and it just makes a mess and it wears your brushes out and it builds up that carbon that I was talking about. So that's, that's kind of no good. Yeah, so I'm not, I don't want to do that. I don't want to use that. The other option I've got is I can buy a different motor. It's basically, so this is an AC76. The motor in my tractor is an AC20. Well, there's an AC35. I know a guy who's got a whole bunch of them, and he's selling them kind of cheapish. I could get one of them from him. That's 1500 bucks, And then I can just use the inverter that I, was, that I would normally use for this. I can use the inverter on that motor. That's $1,500. Uh, the other option would be a Nissan Leaf motor, inverter, transmission package that's about thirty four hundred dollars <sighs> and at that point it's kind of like well <laughs> maybe instead of spending thirty four hundred dollars on another motor i could spend less than that and get a different donor that this motor will fit in maybe get like a little toyota pickup or a little ranger you know from the 70s either one of them 70s or 80s and they're basically the same size as this little dude you know, but then I've got this thing that doesn't have an engine in it, doesn't have a fuel tank in it. It's basically all taken apart. Uh, what do I do with it? You know, it's not really worth a whole lot. Uh, the other option is, is that I could take this in bell off this right here and just machine this off down flat with this, uh, the outer motor casing. And if I did that, it'll fit. But before I go and do that, I want to make sure that this motor is actually going to fit in this engine bay anyway. Now I've measured it and it looks like it will fit just barely. Maybe. I don't know. So now what I'm going to do, now that I've got that painted on the bottom side, I'll go ahead and cut it out so it's a lot closer to the actual size. I'll take this CV flange off, put the motor on it, mount, install it, have the, you know, have the mounting bolts all drilled and tapped and everything and go ahead and see if I can install this thing in there. See if it will fit. And if it will fit, then I will go ahead and machine that off. Just machine that so I got uh, clearance for my little dry, my dry flange there. And that's what I'll do. And uh, if it doesn't fit, then I'm, I'll be glad that I didn't just go ahead and do that. 
and then I can go to my other options. But, whew, kind of a long-winded uh, discussion. I, I don't know if anybody made it through this far, but if you did, uh, thank you for watching. Thank you for sticking with me. And uh, when I know more, I'll let you know. Thanks for watching. See you next time.